Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John, and today here on the channel, we're going to be talking about 1955's The Night of the Hunter and its brand new Keenan Lorber 4K Blu ray that just came out. But before we dive into that, if you are a fan of movie reviews, 4K Blu ray reviews, lists, and podcasts, we try and do them all here on the channel. And nothing helps this channel out more than by simply liking this video and subscribing to the channel. So The Night of the Hunter was released in 1955. It is Charles Lawton's only film. It stars Robert Mitchum and Shelley Winters in the starring roles. And this movie tells the story about Reverend Harry Powell who happened to share a jail cell with a man who at the very beginning of this movie we see robbed a bank, killed two people, gave $10,000 to his kids and told them to hide the money and don't tell anybody where it is. But the Reverend being a serial killer and just a monster of a man played amazingly by Robert Mitchum in this movie decides... After this guy told him in jail that he, you know, he robbed his bank, gave the $10,000, and but this guy took that to the grave with him. He didn't tell Robert Mitchum where that money was. He didn't want to. That money's for his kids. So Robert Mitchum, when he gets out of jail, this reverend decides he's got his eyes set on that family. He's going to go see those two kids. He's going to go see that guy's widow because he was hung to death because he also, he killed two people, so he deserved that. But the Reverend Harry Powell, he is a monster of a man. He knows how to sway people. He knows how to charm people. Robert Mitchum is perfect in this leading role. When I think of Robert Mitchum, because of my age, I always think of him as the boss in Scrooge. That voice is iconic, that deep voice. You know, it just sounds like the kind of voice that could control a room. Those droopy eyes, you know, they can really charm a person. And that's why you get him for this movie. He knows how to charm everybody. When he first gets in the town, everyone loves him. And that's when we first see on his fingers that he has the words love and hate. And he starts telling the tale, the biblical tale of love and hate. And you'll notice, and I knew right away, that this is the exact same way that it's delivered in the movie. Do the right thing by Radio Rahim. Like me to tell you the little story of right hand, left hand? It's a tale of good and evil. It was with this left hand that old brother Cain struck the blow that laid his brother low. Love. These five fingers, they go straight to the soul of man. So what this told me was that Radio Rahim is a huge fan of The Night of the Hunter. I'm just kidding, actually. Ernest Dickerson, who was the cinematographer on Do the Right Thing and also directed the movie Juice, him and Spike Lee were both big fans of the movie The Night of the Hunter. So they just actually took that because they were fans of this movie and they put it in their movie. But my mind went right to Do the Right Thing. And the way that Robert Mitchum delivers the lines in this movie is also iconic. You know, he just sways everybody. Even you can hear somebody in the crowd go, I never heard it better told. Everybody loves him, including Shelley Winters, who is a widow. And she gets swooped up in him. You know, she's a lonely woman. She's lost in this world. So she's easy. She's easy prey for this guy. You know, she's a widow trying to raise two kids. Everyone's telling her she needs a man because you couldn't go at it alone whether you're a man or a woman. You can't raise two kids by yourself. They end up falling in love, but Robert Mitchum, the monster that he is, this good old reverend, decides, I am going to... Make these kids tell me where they're at 10 grand is. First, he plays it all nice like he's their friend. But the kid John knows better. He knows uh, this guy is trying to get something from him. And that's when we get to see the anger come out of him in his performance. Because he is a serial killer. He is a monster. But he'll snap on these kids in a whim. Mainly the daughter Pearl. He tries to like hold back. He snaps at one point And he just plays it off like, Ah, oh, you see what you did, John? You made me lose my temper. And the way he delivers it is just so iconic. Now, what makes this movie stand the test of time and why it's influenced so many great directors like Spike Lee or Guillermo del Toro is the cinematography. That's why there's actually an extra on the 4K Blu-ray disc on the second disc itself, which is actually just a Blu-ray disc with Ernest Dickerson because the cinematography is what has really stood the test of time for everybody. You know, there's certain images in this movie that even me who's never seen this film before has seen certain images of this movie. Like mainly character in this movie ends up getting murdered and getting her throat slit and the character who murdered put her body tied it to an old Model T and just drowned it at the bottom of a river and we see her hair flowing in the wind with the seaweed and yet she's got a slit in her throat it'll get under your skin but you could just see that that image alone influenced Guillermo del Toro's uh, a career in a lot of ways also there's a lot of stuff dealing with like lonely kids and one parent having to raise these kids this is something we would also see in a lot of Guillermo del Toro movies so you can see that he was a fan of this movie he's spoken very highly of it Ernest Dickerson has spoken very highly of this movie and the influence it has this movie was also very 
very influenced by the German expressionism when it comes to cinematography. It is such iconic shots where you don't like you can see that they're on sets and the set around it is all dark. So we could just see the frame of the house or the frame of the bedroom they're in or the staircase. And again, just the images get under your skin throughout this entire movie because it plays more like a fantasy, but like a nightmare fantasy. It gets there's a certain scenes where the kids are floating down the river and we're just focused on them and everything behind them is out of focus. They also play with our expectations where they light the villain in bright lights while the hero, or at least the hero in this moment of the movie, she is lit dark and that's just, you know, playing with our expectations of light is always good and dark is always bad. But this person in this movie, the villain of this movie, he's trying to play like he is the good person. He's using religion to manipulate everything that he wants. He wants to come out on top at the very end. He doesn't care who he hurts in his wake. He's going to use everything under his power and his power is using religion and taking advantage of people who believe in this. And that's basically what they're trying to show it's like the people the person who might come off as this dark angry person might actually be the saint in the matter whereas the bad person might be the one trying to fool you or try to get trick you into believing what they're saying is the truth we see this in politics to this very day where people use something that could be good for evil it's just unfortunately it's something that we have to deal with with human nature and a movie from 1955 is tackling these issues but the movie tells you right up from what it is is that hate is still will always lose to love and that's exactly how this movie plays out without spoiling anything that happens in this movie but if you haven't seen the night of the hunter let me just tell you for a 1955 movie this movie has aged like a fine wine it wasn't received well at the time mainly probably because it is a lot of imagery. It was taking a lot of examples from German Expressionism and from silent films, so there's a lot of scenes without dialogue. That's why there's also certain tracks on this movie, which we'll talk about when we get to the 4K Blu-ray review, where you don't even have to have the dialogue. That's how good of a movie this is. It works on its own any which way you want to watch it. I do recommend highly that you watch it. Is it going to stand up next to modern horror films or just modern films in general? There are points in here where, you know, certain dialogue might take you out of it or certain edits might make you notice that it's a 1950s movie. Also, the child actors, they're doing their best, but there are times where you can tell they couldn't get the best out of them. And it might take you out for a moment, but it really doesn't drag this film down at all. I recommend highly that you check out The Night of the Hunter, even if you don't grab this 4K Blu-ray that we're going to talk about right now. Well, here it is. A new Kino Lorber 4K Blu-ray, this time The Night of the Hunter, which just came out in May of 2023. This was presented in its original aspect ratio of 1.66. It's got HDR10 on it. It's got Dolby Vision on it. It has three audio tracks on it. It's got a mono track, a 2.0. It's original track. It's got a 5.1, which is also a DTS track. And it's got an isolated music and effects track, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But before we dive into those things, let's talk about the packaging, because we do get a nice Kino Lorber 4K slip cover on here which i do appreciate it's in line with all of their other slip covers which means it's going to look great on your shelf if you're a kino lorber collector like myself the 4ks all line up nicely on your shelf if they have these nice slip covers on them you pull it off you get the same artwork underneath which is really nice artwork you pop that open you get yourself a kino lorber 4k and a kino lorber blu-ray with the Kino Lorber disc design on that. They don't go for the individual disc design. All of their 4K disc and Blu-ray disc all look the same, which is fine with me. I like that Kino Lorber goes for their own distinct look because I feel like they're one of the leaders like in the Criterion Collection of preserving classic films, like a classic film like this from 1955, but a lot of people might not know about. So I do appreciate that they kind of go for their own distinct look. Would I like individual disc design more? From a personal preference, absolutely. I always prefer that. I always prefer things to look a little bit more eye-grabbing than a little bit more plain, but unfortunately, we don't get that with Kino Lorber, but I can understand why they do it, and I can appreciate it and respect it. Even if it's not my favorite, I do like how these look on my shelf. Now, from the visual standpoint, this is in black and white. They did actually want them to shoot this in color, but they felt like that would not have worked with this type of film, and I'm glad they didn't because it's some of the most beautiful black and white you will ever see on film. And that's what they were going for. This is a cinematographer's masterpiece. This movie looks absolutely gorgeous. Every single shot of this, you could take out of it and have it turned into a painting and placed on your wall. It will just, it's drop dead gorgeous as far as black and white goes. I'm absolutely glad that they went for that. You know, I know not everyone loves black and white, but if you look at this from an art perspective and how good it looks, like all the silhouettes, things being lit in dark while other things were lit in light, like you could do all that digitally now, but they had to do this with a certain film stock. They had to run it at a certain speed to get the look that they wanted to like this took an extreme 
effort to make this look as good as it does. And this 4K Blu-ray with its Dolby Vision and HDR10, and I checked it out in both of them, they are very comparable. I thought the Dolby Vision might have been slightly better. It's got a low amount of film grain on here. I'm glad that it's not wiped clean with any digital film grain enhancer, so we don't have to worry about that. So none of the actual skin tones look waxy. Just the lighting of this movie works so well with the black and white. It's probably one of the best looking black and white 4Ks I have ever seen. And Kino Lorber has put out some really good ones. I reviewed a few last year from Stanley Kubrick that they put out and Touch of Evil, which I all which I thought were some of the best 4Ks in black and white that I have also ever seen. Citizen Kane is a surprise because that's one of the best shot films also, and its Criterion release surprisingly doesn't get as high as even a movie like this when it's shot in black and white. So as far as black and white 4Ks go, I definitely think that this is probably... If not the top, it's pretty damn close, but that's just to go back to the source material and how they shot this film. They wanted it to look like one of the best looking films when they were making it, and they nailed it. It's still good after all of these years. I mean, again, this movie came out in 1955, so if you're trying to compare it to a modern day film like The Lighthouse that's shot in black and white, where it's really taking notes from a movie like this, you might say, oh, it doesn't look as good, but believe me, try and put yourself in their shoes back then and watch it from that perspective. It's still incredible incredible it gets put on a lot of lists as some of the best looking films ever made and it deserves that because it does look amazing now as far as the extras go i didn't mention this yet but that blu-ray disc is just your extras so you're only getting the film on the 4k that blu-ray disc does not include the film all your extras are going to be on there and it's a pretty limited amount of extras it's really just three interviews where you get one which was my favorite again with ernest dickerson the guy who was the cinematographer with spike lee up until malcolm x and then he started directing his own movies and probably his most famous and my personal favorite of them is juice and you know because he's such a cinematographer and he loves how movies are shot just getting his thoughts on how this movie looked yeah it was speaking to me who just loves cinematography that's something if i was to get in film i would always want to be a cinematographer or a director because it's like you're creating the film you're creating the look of the film and that's the stuff that really does last that's the the look has to last if you get you watch certain movies for back then and if they're shot almost like a soap opera they just don't stand up anymore they just look ugly whereas a movie like this still looks beautiful it looks like it was a choice to shoot this way which it was and i think they did a phenomenal job with that but the interviews on here are all pretty good i think you should definitely check them out there's just not much of them there's a commentary track that's on the 4k disc and then you can watch the trailer on the blu-ray disc but the, one of the big things i wanted to talk about about this movie even though we do get those limited amount of extras which is kind of in line with Keena Lore where they aren't the greatest or the leader in extras we get a little bit usually interviews like that but for the most part they don't really give us like a looking back documentary or anything like that so I can feel a little bit disappointed in the extras, but I still think that they're pretty good. But what they did with the audio tracks, I really appreciate. They could have easily just threw on a DTS HD mono track on here, but we get a 5.1 also. And we get something that I think is really cool, and that is this isolated music and effects track, which means they removed all of the dialogue and they just have the effects and the music enhanced so you can watch it almost like a silent film. And it works perfectly as a silent film because they were kind of influenced by silent films so this is the look that they were going for while they were making the movie and if you watch it like this it might actually enhance your viewing of this movie yes you lose robert mitchum's iconic voice but the movie still works any way you choose to watch it and i just found that fascinating because a You'll pay attention to the background noise, which maybe a lot of people don't pay attention to, but that does have to get put in the movie. So watching it with that effect and, you know, you learn to appreciate sound design a little bit more and what they were going for with this movie with its score because the music, I didn't bring it up, is iconic. A lot of it is sung by the preacher himself or the kids singing like biblical songs. I'm not too familiar with them myself personally, but the way that they're singing them, it becomes haunting and poetic and just, you know, again... Each audio track, which everyone you choose to watch of the three, I think that they're all perfect. I think they did a phenomenal job on the audio, the visuals. I don't have many complaints at all about this 4K disc. My only complaints would be that you don't get a downgraded version of Blu-ray, which I know a lot of people appreciate. The packaging is just standard Kino Lorber, so it's nothing special. And the extras, even though I liked them, there weren't much of them, and you really aren't going to get much more that are going to last you about 
I don't know, 45 minutes. So there's not too much extra that you're getting on here. I mean, if you appreciate the commentary track, that's included as well, which I think a lot of people will. And if you are a fan of film, this is one of those films I recommend you check out just from a, an historic standpoint. It might not be the most entertaining film you've ever seen, but if you are a film fan, a cinephile, this is one of those movies that you have to see just to appreciate the influence that it had on other films. And overall, if I was going to rate this 4K Blu-ray on a score of 1 to 10, I would really give this a solid 8.5 out of 10. I can definitely recommend you grabbing this at its Kino Lover price of right now of $27, which really isn't too bad because I do think it's worth that price. But before we get out of here today, it is Monday, and that means it's time for us to spin the magic wheel and pick our two winners for the digital code giveaway in Friday's video I asked you guys two questions you answered those questions in the comment section below you only had to answer one and if you did I put your name on a magic wheel today that I'm gonna spin two times if you are one of the two lucky winners you have your choice of the digital codes that you have seen on your screen before you today so what did I ask you guys this week I asked you guys what was your favorite action movie from 2000 to 2009 and I asked you, what was your favorite Jason Statham movie? And we got a lot of great answers in them. Surprisingly, I think the leader was Death Race for Jason Statham as far as his favorite movies go. I got a couple recommendations for War with him and Jet Li, which I think is a good movie as well. We saw The Transporter. And as far as favorite action movies from 2000 to 2009, they were all over the place. You know, we got a lot of classics in that era. That was The Rise of Nolan. We got Batman Begins and The Dark Knight then. So there was so many action movies in the 2000s. I don't think the 2000s hit the highs of action as far as we got in like the 80s and 90s, which I think were probably peak action. I still don't think we've hit the highs of the 80s and 90s, but... You know, that's something that's going to be really hard to recreate. I just feel like back then, action movies were special. They were different. Nowadays, they kind of roped them into the superhero thing where superhero movies are kind of our action movies where we don't really get too many straightforward action movies. Maybe one with a stupid plot that we all just kind of get wrapped up into. I don't think we get that anymore. But anyway, guys, I'm going to spin this magic wheel and whoever the two names are, those are going to be your two winners. So without further ado, let's do that right now. Day. All right, Jerry, we're going to remove you and spit again. Alright, congratulations to Cutie Pie and Jeremy D. I think you guys have both won before, so you guys know how this works. Reach out to us at our email address of let's talk entmt at gmail.com. But we also have a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter where you can DM us there. Let us know which of the digital codes you want. As long as the other winner didn't take it, then that digital code is all yours. Actually, speaking of that, last week, the two people who won reached out to me within one minute of each other for the same digital code. So that created a very awkward situation for me where I had to tell somebody that the other guy got to their got to me just before they did, and unfortunately, they took the digital code that you want. You know, it makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable, but we have to be honest, and whoever the winners are, and whoever gets to me first, unfortunately, I only have one of each code. Some of them I have two, but, you know, most for the most part, when it comes to, like, brand new releases and their digital codes, I only have one, so I can only give you guys one, so, you know, you gotta be quick with it. Whoever gets to me the first, whoever gets to me first, that's it. They get the code. I mean, I wish I can give them both out. I wish I had more, but unfortunately... I don't, so whoever gets to me first, you get your choice of the digital code. So if you want crank, you better be emailing me really quick. <laughs> 
I'm just playing around though, guys. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me here on another episode of Let's Talk. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you want to grab the Night of the Hunter on 4K, you can buy it through our Amazon affiliate link down in the description below. It costs you no extra money and it really does help the channel out so we can keep making 4K Blu-ray reviews just like this. And another way to support this channel out is just by simply liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and, and then just going out into those streets. Maybe you want to throw on your best hat and go out there and tell all of your friends about us. We'll be seeing you around. <laughs>